Good morning, we are on to a new topic today, okay, and it's solving equations, which you've done a little bit of before, okay, we're taking a little bit further in year eight though, and you'll probably need a reminder anyway, because I think you did this from home last year, and you're doing it from home again, so it's not a bad idea to do it again anyway. So if you put a head in solving equations, uh, I've got some notes, and obviously all the questions I do, you can do as examples. There's some questions as well, where you can pause the video, have a go, and then play the video when you're ready, and I'll go through them. Okay, so what I want to start with is just filling in the blanks, please. So on these questions, um, just put a box or a circle and fill in the missing number. Okay, pretty look nice in your books if you did something to the missing number, so it makes sense what you were doing. Okay, you're not working out the answer as such. You like on number one, the answer's 13. I want the missing number. So maybe colour it in or put a box around it. And when you're ready, press play. Okay, so for this first one then, something add six is 13. Hopefully you figured out that the quickest way to do this was to turn the question around and do a taking away rather than just guessing numbers. If you're quick at maths, I mean the number probably popped in your head anyway. But 13 take away 6 is 7, so you should have 7 in the first one. Something take away 3 is 8. Okay, so the number is obviously bigger than 8. It's 3 bigger than 8. 8 add 3 is 11. Again, it's working backwards. Okay, the question says take away 3, but to work out the missing number, you add 3. Something divided by 3 is 21. Oh, sorry, something times 3 is 21. So you need to tell you 3 times table. How many 3s are in 21 is 7. So what you've just done there is 21 divided by 3. Okay, so 7. Something divided by 5 is 6. So it must be quite a big number. Because when you divide it by 5, the answer is 6. So the best thing to do is to swap it around and do the opposite. So 6 times 5 is 30. Something take away 7 is 2. So it must be quite a big number. Because when you take away 7, you're still left with 2. So 2 add 7, swap it around to the opposite, is 9. Something times 8 is 32. So swap it around to the opposite. 32 divided by 8 is Four. Something divided by 3 is 8. So if you swap around to the opposite, 8 times 3 is 24. Something add 6 is 7. So it must be a small number because when you add 6 to it, you get to 7. Swap it around and do 7, take away 6, and it's 1. 1 add 6 makes 7. Okay. Now the ones under the line are a little bit different. Um, 6 times something is 36. So you can swap that around and do it by dividing. So 36 divided by 6 is 6. Or if you know your times tables, that's easy. Okay. 7 add something is 15. So again, you can swap that around and do 15 take away 7 is 8. These ones are a bit different, these last two. They won't quite work the same as the others. 14 take away something is 11. So the easiest way to do that is to do 14 take away 11. So swap them places and you end up with 3 there. And 42 divided by something is 7. Well, to work that out, you can do 42 divided by 7 is something. Okay, and the answer in there should be 6. Okay, but the, those last two particularly, they don't necessarily match the pattern of the ones above. Where the general rule I was following was that I just worked in reverse. Okay, now if you manage to work those out, you've solved equations because what I would have done if they were equations, I would have written that x add 6 is 13, x take away 3 is 8. I wouldn't have written x times 3, I would have written 3x because that's how we show times in an algebra 3x equals 21. This one, I wouldn't have written a divide sign. Because it's dividing, we would have written a fraction. So x over 5 equals 6. But that's exactly the same question, and the answer would be 30. x take away 7 is 2. Again, there's no time sign in algebra. So instead of writing x times 8, we would write 8x. But it means x times 8. x divided by 3 
as an equation would be written like that. Okay. X add 6 equals 7. 6 times X, so 6X, because there's no time sign, you stick them together, equals 36. 7 add X equals 15. 14 take away X is 11. And 42 over X equals 7. So really, you've solved equations. Because in an equation, all we do is where we've got a missing number, we put a letter. Most of the time it's X, but it can be any letter from the alphabet. Okay, but we tend to stick with X and Y a lot of the time. Okay, but that's all an equation is. Okay, it's um, a partially done calculation with a missing number. The missing number, we put a letter there for now, and your job is to work out that missing letter, just like your job was to fill in the missing number in the box. Okay, so nothing to be afraid of. All you've got to be careful with algebra is how you write it down. Okay, so let's move on to the next slide then. So side heading one step equations. And a one step equation is the easiest type of all because in a one step equation, there's only been one operation. So adding, subtracting, multiplying, dividing, we've only done one thing. And because we've only done one thing, you've only got to do one thing to solve it. Okay, but the key here is to work backwards and do the reverse, do the opposite. Okay, so if in the question is add in, to work it out, you'll need to do some taking away. If the question has got multiply in, to work it out, you'll have to do the opposite and do dividing, just like on the missing number questions a minute ago. Okay, and it relates to number machines, which you would have done in year five and year six. Okay, where when you work through backwards through a number machine, when you've got the output and you want the input and you go backwards through the machine, you always do the opposite. Okay, and I'll draw some number machines later on when we get to some of them, because it'll make it easier to explain. But in green there, look, you must write your workings out properly line by line. In algebra, we're really, really fussy of how you write your answers. Okay, so let's have a look at a really simple question then. X plus two equals 11. So some number, add two, makes 11. To work it out, you've got to do the opposite. 11 take away 2. And the answer is 9. So the missing number is 9. But how do we write that down? Because we've got to show our workings. So to work it out, we did 11 take away 2. So what we do on the next line, look, we say that x equals... And that plus 2 on the left-hand side, when we do the opposite, it goes over... Okay, so what you can do if you like, you can put a circle, you don't have to do this. And we can say when it goes to the other side, it does the opposite, so 11 take away 2. Okay, now you don't put your answer in here, because in algebra you're not supposed to have two equals on the same line. So we start a new line again, and we say that x equals, because x is what, working, what we're working out, so x has to be on every single line, x equals 11 take away 2, so x equals nine and that would be the, the sort of the proper mathematical way of solving that equation okay if we do another one look x take away five equals seven first of all what is the opposite of taking away five it's adding five so x equals seven add five and then to write our answer we go to the next line so x equals 12. All right. Now, what I tend to see a lot of on these questions, so if I redo that one but badly, this is what people will do. X take away 5 equals 7. 7 add 5 equals 12. Okay, all on one row. They've got the 12 in there, but mathematically, that's really bad, and in an exam, you'd lose marks for writing it out like that. Okay, even though you've done the right steps and you've got the right answer, it's not following a proper algebraic method. So you've got to go down the page, line by line, never having two equals on the same row. Okay. If you want to write something new, if you want to, if you want to do the next bit, you must start a new line underneath. Okay. So opposite of adding is taken away. The opposite of taken away is adding. Let's have a look at a times in one. Now remember, in times in there is no time sign. So if I want to say that I've times by three, I would write that. So 3 times x, so 3 times something equals 18. 
3 times something. If I'm times in, in the question, the opposite of times in is dividing. Okay, so the opposite of times in by 3 is dividing by 3. We don't like writing it out with a dividing sign because it's a little bit babyish. Okay, what you need to get into the habit of, instead of writing a divide by 3 sign like that, especially in algebra, 18 over 3, it means divided by anyway. Okay, so it means exactly the same thing, but in algebra we prefer to write it like a fraction instead of a divide sign. 18 divided by 3 equals 6, but remember you must start a new line. So x equals 6 on the next line. Okay, we'll do a couple more just to get you into the habit of how to write them down, and then you can do a few on your own. So let's do a dividing one this time. These are all one step. I'm only doing one thing. Something divided by 4 equals 7. Okay, so in the question, I'm dividing by 4. The opposite of dividing by 4 is to times by 4. So on the other side, x equals 7 times 4. 4. 7 times 4 is 28, but to write it down, we go to the next line. So x equals 28. Okay, we'll do two more because I've got some empty space. So we'll do x take away 9 equals 6, and we'll do 9x equals 36. Okay, so the opposite of taking away 9 is to add 9. So x equals 6 add 9, 6 add 9 is 15, x equals 15. This is times in because they're stuck together. Okay, so 9 times something is 36. The opposite of times in by 9 is to divide by 9. Now remember we show it like a fraction, so 36 divided by 9, make sure you got it the right way around, it's not 9 divided by 36. Is 36 divided by 9 and 36 divided by 9 is 4 so underneath x equals 4 and your workings need to look like my workings in red okay going down the page first of all you say what you're going to do so I said I'm going to take away 2 and underneath I worked it out I'm going to add 5 underneath I worked it out to work it out we divided by 3 underneath we worked it out okay so have a go at these questions so there's 12 they're of all different types they're all one step the letters are different every time but don't let that put you off okay work backwards do the opposite have a go when you're ready press play and i'll go through them okay we're adding 5 in a so to work it out we've got to take away 5 so w equals 7 take away 5 7 take away 5 is 2 if we're adding 2 in the question, we should take away 2 in our workings. 10 take away 2 is 8. Make sure you go underneath. If we're taking away 1 in the question, we should be adding 1 when we work out our answer. So that's 7. If we're taking away 4 in the question, we should be adding 4 to work it out. So that's the opposite. 5 add 4 is 9. If we're adding 4 in the question, we should be taking away 4 because that's the opposite to work it out. So that's 9. You can always check your answers by seeing if it works. Look, 9 add 4 makes 13, so it works. Okay, this is a times in one. Times in by 3, the opposite is to divide by 3. Make sure you've written it as a fraction, not with a divide sign. So 12 divided by 3, w equals 4. Here we're times in by 2. So the opposite would be to divide by 2. 18 divided by 2 is 9. On H, we're already dividing by 2. So the opposite to dividing by 2 is to times by 2. 6 times 2 is 12. Okay. This is dividing by 4 because it's underneath. The opposite of dividing by 4 is to times by 4. 7 times 4 is 28. This is times in. Okay, the opposite of times in by 5 is to divide by 5. So y equals 30 divided by 5. y equals 6. On k in the equation, we're adding 10. So to work it out, we need to take away 10. 
x equals 30. On an L, we're times in by 2 in the question, so we must divide by 2 in the answer. 34 divided by 2, x equals 17. Now, if we were in school, I'd come round and check that you've written them all out properly. Okay, because if you're lazy and you don't write your equations and your algebra out properly, when they get harder, you're going to find it really difficult. Because what I suspect is that some of you, because you've got quite good mental maths, you've worked out the answer in your head and just written down any old rubbish on the page. Which is fine when they're easy, I suppose, because you get the right answer. But when they get harder, you're going to struggle because you don't know what to write down. Whereas the people who've been writing it down properly the whole time will just carry on writing down properly and get the correct answers even when they get harder. Okay, so that's one step equations. Now we go on to two step. Okay, so put a side head in two step. And the only difference now is that I'm going to do two different things in the question. And so you're going to have to do two different things to work out the answer. Okay, so a two step equation has two operations in it. You have to be careful what order you work in when you work backwards. And it helps to think of a number machine. Okay, so let's show you a typical two-step equation. So I've got a number. The first thing I'm doing is timesing it by 3. Then I'm adding 1. And my answer is 22. Okay, so if it was to think of a number game that you've probably all played before, I think of a number, I times it by 3, then I add 1, and the answer is 22. All right, so if it was a number machine, it would look like this. So... I start with my missing number, my input, which is x. I times it by 3. Then I add 1. And the answer, the output, is 22. And when you work backwards through a number machine, okay, you work in reverse and you do the opposite. So the first thing we would need to do is to take away 1. After we've taken away 1, the next thing to do would be to divide by Three, and that should get us back to the input. Okay, so that's exactly what we're going to do here. But it's important that we take away one first, because we added one last, and we're working backwards. Remember. Okay, so how would this look on the page when it's an equation? So, if you like to put circles around and move things, let's put a circle around that plus one. The opposite of adding one is to take away one. But be careful, because we don't write that x equals 22 take away 1. We've still got this 3 by here. So 3x equals 22 take away 1. Okay, we haven't done anything with the 3 yet. We will do in a minute, but not yet. So 3x equals 22 take away 1. Then we work out what 22 take away 1 is. So that's 21. Okay, we're still not finished because we've still got the 3, haven't we, by here. We haven't done anything with yet. We've done this bit. We've taken away 1. Now we've got to do this bit. We've got to divide by 3. So the opposite of times in by 3 is to divide by 3. Remember, we write it as a fraction. And now the 3 has gone from in front of there because we've moved it and we're dividing. Okay, so now you can get rid of the 3 because it's gone down there. And 21 divided by 3 is 7. Okay, if we could do another one, we get rid of this. Let's write a question. So we'll have 5x take away 2 equals 38. So I've times by 5, then I took away 2. So times 5, take away 2, 38. This is my number machine. So if I'm working backwards, first I've got to do the opposite of taking away 2, which is adding 2. Then I go to the opposite of times in by 5, which is dividing by 5. Okay, so make sure you get your order right. So first job is to add 2. So 5x on the left equals 38 add 2 on the right. And 38 add 2 is 40, but you must go to the next line and write that down. Okay. The opposite of times in by 5 is dividing by 5. Written like a fraction, but 40 divided by 5 is 8. And the nice thing about solving equations is once you start writing them out properly, they do all look the same and follow the same pattern. So if I get rid of that, 
Let's do another one without a number machine. Look, 3x plus 5 equals 23. So the first thing we do is get rid of the plus 5. The opposite of adding 5 is to take away 5. So 3x equals 23 take away 5. 23 take away 5 is 18 on the next line. Now I get rid of the 3 by doing some dividing. 18 divided by 3x equals 6. Okay. So that's a fairly standard two-step equation. You might get ones like this as well. So on this one, let's have a look. So what have I done this time? So I started with x, my missing number, which on a number machine would be the input. The first thing I did here was I divided by 3. Then we added 2, and the answer came out as 9 which would be the output on a number machine. So working backwards, the opposite of adding 2 is taking away 2. The opposite of dividing by 3 is times in by 3. So let's write this down then. So first thing to do is to take away 2. So x over 3, remember that stays the same because we haven't done anything with that yet, equals 9 take away 2. x over 3 equals 7, because now that's 9 take away 2. Now I'm ready to change that dividing by 3 to a times 3. 7 times 3, we're on this bit here, look. 7 times 3 equals 21. Okay. Now, when I say you've got to be careful with your order, if I do this question... Now this time, because the plus 2 is part of the fraction, it means that I added 2 before I did the dividing. Okay, so uh, let me do the divide by 3, didn't we? Output there, look. So by putting the plus 2 in the fraction, what's happened is, look, whereas before we divided by 3, then added 2, I've added 2 first and then divided by 3. So that's where you've got to be really careful of what order things were done in. So this time, we're going to have to times by 3 first. Okay, so the 3 moves first this time. So x add 2 equals 9 times 3. x add 2 equals 27. Then I take away 2. 27, take away 2, 25. Totally different answer. Okay, And it all depends on what order we did things in. Okay, If the plus 2 is part of the fraction, it means the plus 2 was done first. If the plus 2 was written afterwards, it means it was done last. And if it was done last in the question, it means that you do the opposite first when you're working out the answer. Okay, And then you can have a go at these. And when you're ready, press play. Okay, first thing to do on number one is 9 take away 3, which is 6. And then 6 divided by 2 is 3. On B, first thing you need to do is to add 1. So 14 add 1, leave the 3w alone for a minute. So 14 add 1 is 15. Make sure you start a new line every time. 15 divided by 3 is 5. First thing to do is get rid of the add 2. So 30 take away 2 is 28. Then we can divide by 7, which is 4. On D, the first thing to do is to take away 20. 35 take away 20, which is 15. So 5x equals 15. 15 divided by 5 is 3. On E, the first thing to do is to add 12. So 48 add 12, which is 60. Start a new line. Now we can divide by 6, which is 10. 
on F then. First thing to do is to add 4. 20 add 4 is 24. And now we can divide by 8 because of the times by 8 there. 24 divided by 8 is 3. And then these are different because they've got some dividing in. So the minus 4 is after the fraction. Okay, so we divided first, then took away 4. So you need to add 4 first. So 6 add 4 is 10. Now we can do the opposite of dividing by 2, which is times in by 2. So 10 times 2 equals 20. Okay, be careful how it looks on the page. It should look like mine. On Q, we need to take away 3 first because we added 3 last. So let's take away 3. So 9 take away 3 is 6. Now we can times by 10 because it's the opposite of dividing. 6 times 10 is 60. And the last one then, first thing we'll need to do is to add 8. So n divided by 9 equals 1 plus 8 n divided by 9 equals 9. The opposite of dividing by 9 is to times by 9. 9 times 9 is 81. Okay, so there you go. Just a little introduction there to one step and two step equations. Remember that the key is to always work backwards and always to do the opposite operation. Adding changes to taking away dividing changes to multiply, and so on.